Hello everyone, this is Squirk Level 65 Necro and Agnar. This is my little series of videos with different little Necro tutorials, tips and tricks. Today I'm just going to cover one of the most basic bread and butter Necro soloing techniques, which is Agro Kiting. I'm here in the Plane of Fire, and I'm actually uh, waiting for Repop, so while I do that, quick word on my setup. I have a level 63 Rogue Pet, with Pet Taunt turned off. I actually have a second pet, which I have suspended, using the Suspend Companion Alternate Advancement ability. This means if I make a mistake or I get sloppy and then my pet dies, I can just click a button and immediately have a buffed new pet ready to go. In terms of spells, uh, for healing, I'll be using my Life Tap over time. For Necro Aggro Kiting, you want to use high mana efficiency spells. I'm using Splurt, Dark Plague, and Blood of Fool. Normally, you would replace Blood of Thule with Funeral Pyre, but this being Plane of Fire, you can't do that. And for a very specific situation, which I'll show you later, I also have the level 1 Life Tap spell loaded, which has a 1.5 second cast time. So that's it. I'm just going to wait for repops, and we will be back shortly. Just one more quick note while uh, we're waiting for a few more repops. In terms of buffs, we're going to be doing this with Shield of Malin, Dead Man Floating, and Mana Conversion. There's two reasons that I don't get a full set of raid buffs or anything before making these videos. One is just to kind of demonstrate that Necros are pretty self-sufficient. You know, you don't need to go slum around and play of knowledge asking people for buffs. You can just get out there and start adventuring. The other reason is my Necro is pretty well geared. Um, I don't want you to have the feeling that all this stuff is only possible because, uh, because of gear. So if you've got a level 65 Necro alt or something who's just dinged level 65, you don't have great gear yet, that's okay. You just go grab maybe a few more buffs, like a Virtue or a, <clears throat> a, a Focus or something, and you'll have approximately the same number of hit points that I'm making these videos with. Okay, uh, the repop should be coming soon, so we will be getting started shortly. All right, I'm back, and we're going to start <coughs> start our kite. So the principle is pretty simple. It's Snare the Mob, and I'm using a clicky, but you can cast the spell. It's the same thing. If you get a resist, run and cast it again. Then cast some dots in the mob. And by doing this, the mob is building hatred towards you. Once you have enough hatred, your pet can start attacking it. So I've just gotten three, uh, three dots here on the guy. Good enough. So we're just going to grab another mob and cast some dots on it. So he's good to go. And I generally like to focus on clearing one side of the this area first. Unfortunately, because I didn't start with a full repop, I'm not sure when different mobs will pop, so it's a little bit of a limitation to my current kite. Going nice and smooth. Let's grab another one. You generally want to have a he resisted. Even though you can kite a bunch of mobs at the same time, you generally want to have them a bit spaced out in terms of um, where their health is. So you have one that's kind of the active mob the pet's involved with. And a few others, you're just building slow, super mana efficient aggro on and slowly whittling away their health. Interrupt them. It can be a bit tricky sometimes when you're in a horse, making sure you stop fully.
Got a minute on the snare on that one. I've lost dots in my primary. So maybe chuck in one more, uh, one more snare. And one more dub. Oh, interrupt. Yeah, I wish I knew when these other mobs were respawning, but I don't, so we're just going to have to be aware of our surroundings, I guess. Let's grab another guy. So these mobs, by the way, are level 68, so three levels higher than me. But they don't summon. As soon as you start aggro-kiting summoning mobs, it really becomes a question of how good is your gear. Kind of defeats the point of this uh, video series. This should be wearing off shortly. Yeah. So that's going to be the next target for our pet. As long as your pet is attacking a mob that's under uh, 20% or 15%, I think it is, you can already. Click pet attack, they will not switch targets until they have finished off their current mob. Unless you first back them off. Okay, um, we need more stuff to kite as soon as we refresh this, this guy. And stay away from that raid boss over there. some dots on him. Let's grab this guy over here. And as soon as I get this, I'm going to check my snares again. How are we doing? Okay, so you kind of get the point by now. You can take this up to 5, but um, I don't suggest going above 5. Because at that point, you are going to uh, run out of sp spots on your extended hotkey, your extended target bar. It'll become very difficult to keep track of snares. Plus, you'll not have that much time to maneuver and cast dots. But five is definitely possible. Six, I, I wouldn't really advise you. You can see our mana, we're sitting at 90%, uh, we're fine. Just checking my snares. This one's about to fade. These guys give pretty good experience because they are high level. Um, unfortunately, I'm kind of maxed out in experience, so I can't tell you uh, exactly what percentage of A they give, but it's good. have for mobs. Has anything repopped? Despite what it may seem, these guys are actually single pulls. I mean, I'm, you can go on like this for hours because you're operating at a, a very mana-efficient rate. 
But I'll just show you one last thing before we end the video. I just need to get one or two more guys dead before I can show you. As soon as this uh, active one dies, some interesting pathing over here. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to run to this far wall away from the tunnel. Just double check your snares, and I see that I've got one fading here. And we're going to run very quickly through the tunnel. Grab this mob. In this case, he aggroed us immediately. Sometimes they just stand there for a full take, in which case you can use your level 1 life tap. And you don't want to snare him either way <clears throat> until you're back out here. And what that allows is for you to get back through this tunnel before you get trapped in there. I'll just show you one more time. Just checking my snares a little bit. Oh, my snares off. Resist. Two resists. And I'm assuming some of these other snares are probably wearing off by now. All right, anyways. Oh, let me get these guys dotted up. So you may be asking, what's even the point of, uh, of kiting so many mobs for doing so little DPS? Because you're basically getting free, or almost mana free, damage done on these mobs. And in the aggregate, it's still much faster than pulling a single one at a time. Okay, so once this guy is settled in, which is this two guys, so I'm going to start running towards the back wall like I showed you. I've got relatively fresh snares on all my targets. And we're going to make a dart for this tunnel. Grab him. 1.5 second cast. Aggro, and I should be able to get out before the other mobs reach the tunnel mouth. So it's just a useless life tap. The level 1 spell is, I believe, the fastest casting detrimental necro spell that we have <clears throat> so it's good for situations where you see to grab something and of course this guy's resisting everything and there we go all right don't want to bore you uh i'll just pretend my pet died So, I'm going to leave. I've lost my pet. And of course, as soon as I do that, I lose my snare. Okay. Check the other snares real quick. So, if you have a suspended companion in the zone, you can't zone out or you'll lose it. 
you just suspend mi minion. I have a pre-buffed, pre-summoned pet ready to go. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, pet.